Better? Better? All right. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, so we're, um, my name is Frederick Julian. I'm part of the product team at Telenav. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm mostly doing iOS development at Telenav. And um, so I see there's, a, there's quite a bit of people from, from Telenav here, uh, but I'll still uh, give you a, a very brief uh, overview. So Telenav was founded in 1999, and it's been operating since then in the, you could call the navigation, car navigation space and LBS uh, world. And, um, you know, over the years, uh, Telenav has served millions of consumers. And uh, we have a Scout product available uh, on the App Store on Android and iOS. But we also have uh, a number of uh, in-car embedded navigation solution. And uh, one, let's say, famous or, or well-known example is with Ford, the Ford Sync. And so there's, there's actually multiple products that we deliver to, to Ford. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, the, the history and, and what Telenav has accomplished over the year was done from a mapping standpoint uh, using proprietary uh, uh, maps, commercial maps. Uh, but a few years ago, uh, Telenav saw uh, value and a lot of opportunities uh, with OpenStreetMap. And so there are two, two key milestones in the past year. So Telenav has been working on OSM for many years, but uh, uh, what's public knowledge, let's say, is that, uh, well, one, uh, we uh, switched to OpenStreetMap uh, as part of our Scout product. And also more recently, so we have also uh, white label products with um, carriers, one being AT&T, uh, and this is public knowledge. And so we've switched to OpenStreetMap also. And the other thing, which some of you may be aware, uh, we acquired, or Telenav acquired, uh, a, another navigation company called Scobbler, uh, based out of Europe. And really the, the, you know, the, the, the view here is that there's, there's a lot of um, opportunities with OpenStreetMap, and you know, we wanted to build this capability that would take us uh, well into the future. And you know, when you combine the two companies, we're talking about uh, many, many years of, of expertise and also uh, capabilities. So what we want to do today is focus on a very specific feature, which we call a map feedback. And um, I will tell you a bit more about that. And the structure is, is quite simple. We'll tell you about the current design, uh, what we're currently working on, so the new design, and also kind of the, the vision uh, moving forward. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that when we launched the product Scout with OSM last, last year um, and introduced this feature of map feedback, we saw uh, uh, thousands of, of reports coming from end users. And, um, you know, there's two, there's two level to these things. Obviously, there's the user experience and the UI that appears in, within the application, but also the, the process, the back-end process by which you go about uh, making corrections to the map. And so if you take our, our Scout product today in the US, you will see that it has, a, you know, kind of a traditional way of thinking about uh, uh, map uh, submission, map errors being submitted by, by end users. And so you can select from a, a set of error types. And then there is the, you know, the text box where, where users can, can provide uh, uh, input. Now, there's been comments uh, even internally, so we, you know, I'll get into this a little bit, is that there, these, this process presents a lot of challenges, right? So you, you, you can control the input up to a point, but at some level, there's a lot of subjectivity interpretation being made by consumers, and that can cause problems from a back end in terms of making that information actionable. Nevertheless, I think it's, it's been a positive experience for us. The other thing that we've done is connecting the, the feedback to the OSM notes, the layer. And so related to that, you know, we've tried to filter as much as possible the, the input coming in. Uh, and in some cases, it's working well. I mean, there's a lot of, so this is just an example of a user uh, getting, uh, you know, uh, through the notes, uh, information as to what the problem is, and then making corrections. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been positive. And, but having said this, there's a lot of room um, for improvements. 
So here are some high-level metrics uh, that you know, I, can, I can share with you. Not that there's more that I don't want to share, but uh, you know, like I said, there's a lot of noise in this uh, uh, data we're, we're, we're getting in. Uh, but overall, we're, we're still seeing a, you know, a, a good amount of feedback per day. Uh, and if you, if you go back to the flow and the user interface, you see there's different types of map errors that really, at the end of the day, are not uh, uh, the result of a problem with the map. It can be the software, so the routing engine, it could be the geocoding. Um, and uh, so there's a m much more than, than what we're presenting. And generally speaking, when we look at the, the, the metrics, the trends, about like 10 to 15% of the cases are actionable. And so that's, that's a huge uh, sal uh, challenge. Um, so far, we've only shared with the community about 1,000 OSM notes, or created uh, 1,000 OSM notes, and about 67, 70% have been closed by the community. When you see closed, it doesn't mean that it was a map error. So in some cases, it's, it is noise. So people are saying, uh, OSM members, uh, contributors are saying, essentially, like, this is not an issue or it's hard for me to tell what the issue is. So there's, again, a lot of improvements uh, that can be made there. And so that's why from a learning standpoint, you know, we, so first of all, map errors in the context of a consumer navigation product is still seen as a negative experience. So there is the, the expectation from end users, consumers, especially those who are not aware of OpenStreetMap or map data in general, what, what, what it entails in, in terms of making it uh, uh, accurate and of quality. Um, so it remains a, neg a negative experience because they have this high level of expectation around uh, quality. And it's also difficult during navigation. So as much as we, we had a feature when you were not in navigation mode, uh, it, it's still an issue when, when you're driving. And like I said, it's uh, you know, sometimes actionable. So because of that, Alex is gonna get uh, into the kind of design criteria we're following right now uh, for this new iteration. And go ahead. Right, so we started from the learnings that we, we had, we learned from the previous iteration and uh, think about how we can make things better, how we can uh, give a new, a better perspective, a more positive perspective of, on the act of reporting uh, map feedback. So we came up with uh, three criteria, three principles that we were to follow uh, for the second iteration. Uh, this would be simple and easy, then engaging, and lastly, actionable. So uh, why simple and easy? Uh, this component is targeted to casual users. It's not, uh, it's not for, you know, uh, hardcore uh, JOSM uh, map contributors. It's for people that might never heard of OSM before. This means, amongst others, that this has to be simple and familiar then we have to ask for a minimum but a precise amount of information because of course no one likes to fill in you know 10 uh, text fields with um, with with a report um, it, it has to be engaging uh, so we we needed to build the right context for uh, asking feedback and even actively yeah asking asking people to give us map feedback uh, also, one thing that we uh, needed to do is to uh, communicate back to the users, to the reporters, when the issues are fixed. This, of course, would increase the confidence for repeating that action, seeing that someone actively did something to fix that uh, in the map. And then it has to be actionable. So uh, while we, we need to request the minimum amount of information, uh, yeah, we, we also need to make sure that we get enough information to fix things in the map. So the purpose of this um, wasn't to gain a lot, lots and lots of feedback, but to actually fix things in the map. So enough with the talk. Let's uh, see a live demo. Okay, is it working? Yeah. So this is Scout Global, the iOS uh, version. If we go to the main menu, we have a new feedback section that opens this screen. Uh, from here, as you see, you can do things like correct a map label, add a place, correct a search result or report a bad direction, 
or you can report something else that wasn't covered. So let's think about uh, you know, a real scenario. Let's say you've just noticed that the street name is changed. Uh, let's go just go simply go to correct, uh, correct uh, a map label section. Here we are. Yeah, this is a fake location. We're not in Cupertino right now. Um, let's say we're here near a big uh, fruit company. And let's say we try to correct the infinite loop name. So we select infinite loop, and then we can simply just say, yeah, we can, we can correct this and say it's something like finite loop, right? So we just say it's now finite. We can optionally add a photo, maybe like a street sign in this case, because this increases confidence that this report is, is real, uh, or add a description. So we just submit this and uh, that's it. Uh, yeah, the other types of feedback are kind of similar to this, so I won't uh, lose a lot of time on this. Um, what I would mention is that with this, we didn't cover the case uh, where you're driving, you know, 50 miles an hour, and you see that something is wrong. Uh, maybe you were routed on a one-way street or things like that. So what do you do then? Uh, this is not feasible, of course. You cannot type while you're, while, while you're driving, but you can safely do is talk, right? I think we all do that. And um, so for navigation feedback, for guidance feedback, we chose to go for a, a voice uh, approach. So let's quickly enter um, a navigation session. Okay. So we start in a navigation. If we notice that something's wrong, what we did is we added a button in the top right corner. What will happen is if I tap it, the phone will record a 10 seconds voice message and then automatically send it to the server. So the only interaction that the user needs to do is to tap, tap on this button. And now we can record a message, say that, I don't know, the street is a one-way street or so, and send it, or the message will be automatically sent. So yeah, this covers uh, the driving. As you see, it's much safer than typing things. Um, also, one important thing is, as I previously said, we need to report back to the users once we fix things, or the community fixes uh, these things. So here, if you go to the previously reported screen, you'd see the, each of the issues that you reported with the current status updated. And also we send a push notification when we, when we fix basically things. Yeah, so this is the overhaul of the, of the feedback component. Um, next I will switch back to the slides and show you more. Okay, until this opens, I hope it does. Um, yeah, yeah, cool. Where's the play? You know where the play button is? This one? Yeah, okay. Five minutes? Okay. Okay. Um, quick look, this is how we visualize data. Well, why? Okay, so this is how we visualize data. This is a voice report that was sent. Uh, besides the voice message that we get from the user, we also uh, get some GPS positions in that specific area, so we can correlate the voice message with the map data. So, um, when, uh, when we connected the Scout users to um, the, so let's backtrack a little bit. Um, when we launched with OSM, we, we were anticipating issues with the map data. So that's a key reason why we, we added 
the, the, this feature as part of the app. Um, and uh, at the same time, we, we started thinking about our users differently, right? So they're, they're consumers of, of a navigation product. We want to give them the best experience possible with the best, best map data available. Uh, but at the same time, we also understood because of our attraction and interest with, with OSM and a lot of us coming from the mapping uh, world that, you know, mapping is not just about fixing errors with the map, right? I mean, that's not why you have people becoming uh, uh, members of the OSM community. So we started thinking about, well, in the long run, that's, that should be our vision. How do we transform of uh, users um, consumers uh, of our navigation product, how do we transform them into uh, OSM members and have them really, you know, get excited about uh, mapping? Um, and, um, and so when today you look at the amount, it's okay, when you look at the amount of uh, people who are doing edits, as much as you have a lot of people who are OSM members, you have two millions, I think, right now, a little bit more, um, you know, the percentage of people who make actual edits is very, very small. So imagine the potential uh, of uh, exposing OSM to as many consumers possible, having them become aware of OpenStreetMap and ultimately have them become contributors. And so that's where we're thinking now of new features to add within the application, which are more, let's say, positive and can be exciting down the road because it will tie to specific user experiences. And so Alex will talk about one of these features which ties to, we call it um, parking assistant, and so he'll cover that. Okay, so I'll go really, really fast. Um, this is a new parking, yeah, this is not a new parking. It's okay, just, uh, there we go. Okay, so in order to build something targeted to casual users, we, needed to, we, we thought we needed to provide the right context to ask for contributions. Uh, in order to do that, we, we built um, Parking Assistant, which is really close to our core business, you know, term by term navigation. And this is how it works. So basically when the users, user gets close to the destination, we offer this option that we can find parking for him. Uh, and we display basically the second screen where you see large P letters indicating parking and also parking, the street side parking marked with blue uh, along with the streets. So this is a cool feature in itself, but for us it's also the right context to ask for map contributions. So if we detect that the car was not parked in the known parking location, we ask for a contribution, as you see in the third screen. So basically with a couple of taps and switches, you can basically add in, uh, add in OSM uh, more data. This will end up as an OSM node, basically. Thanks. And so to conclude here, um, you know, kind of our uh, high-level vision is that, you know, we want to connect the Scout community, Scout users, to the OSM community. Hopefully with the impact that it will increase the number of, of OSM members, right? Um, and we also want to expand, uh, we want to move beyond just mapping errors into, you know, a, a much broader uh, uh, mapping experience. And, you know, this changes the whole, I mean, there's a lot of frustration, you see that in the feedback we get, in terms of the, even the comments that people make. And I'm sure when we launch the, the voice uh, uh, feedback, we're gonna hear quite a bit. Um, but we have to reframe, you know, we, I think we, there's an opportunity there to reframe uh, map errors, which is, can be frustrating, annoying, and also even the dynamic where, you know, oftentimes, even today with navigation product, when you submit uh, a report, you don't really know where this is going, right? And you're not exposed to, to the process, and you're, you're not even able to go and correct the map yourself. And even recently, I believe that Google has, um, has started to prevent, uh, uh, you know, uh, the map feedback for a bunch of other reasons, uh, vandalism and so forth. But what's unique with OSM is that I think it's a, a much mature community, first of all. Uh, granted, there, there is vandalism from time to time. Um, and um, I think, you know, uh, commercial companies like Telenav and, and joining with Mapbox and also working and engaging with the community, there's, there's a huge opportunity there 
to actually educate the masses as to what mapping is. And ultimately, you'll have, I'm, I'm convinced of that, so many uh, 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 applications in the marketplace that will leverage far more location content. Like, you, you know, after many, many years, so with Google coming out with maps and a lot of application coming out over the years that have a location component, it's, it's, you still feel like we haven't gotten to a point where, where people is leveraging that experience when they're mobile. And as you know, a lot of people create content, uh, there are the check-ins, but it, it, people don't necessarily understand that they're doing mapping, right? Like nobody is necessarily concerned, hey, I wanna make sure that you know, uh, the footprint of my house is properly digitized. Now, some people for privacy reason, they may not like that, but just think of all the experiences you have while you navigate throughout the world, like the parks you go to with your kids, you know, the, the, the places where you have experiences with people. Why not want to have this content available to you and others when it's relevant, right? And, and what are the means that, uh, you know, how will this be uh, happening is through application, but you need some, some underlying platform. And, and so that's why we, we believe in OSM and we'll continue uh, to invest in that. Uh, so we still have a, a couple of minutes, but I'll just mention that we have a booth out there. Uh, go and talk to, to us. Uh, we have obviously a number of products on the market that uses OSM. We have an SDK and you know, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you. So we can take questions unless you want to go out and have beers, but um, go ahead. Attribute to to um, to your method. Okay, so you the question. So the question is, if uh, whether the question was is if we whether we, if we take into account opening hours for parking, street side parking, basically. Yeah? So uh, we didn't consider that yet. It's a very good idea. We'll have to take a look if it's available in OSM. Basically, if it is, we'll definitely do it. At uh, the current rate of notes you put into OSM, I think it was about 67% were resolved. Do you have any feel how many of those were fixed and how many were considered invalid by the OSM community? So, can you hear? The question is, out of the rate of, of uh, OSM notes that have been uh, closed, how many were actual map, map errors being corrected? So. We, ha we don't have a number, uh, it's more anecdotal, so we probably think it's about 50-50, you know, <laughs> to put it this way. Um, but again, this goes back to how, you know, what's the input, uh, not just within the app, but also within uh, the notes uh, uh, feature. And, uh, but ultimately, that's the sort of metrics that we need to have to, to, to know if we're heading in the right direction or not. So very good point. Well, there's no more questions. Thank you and enjoy the evening.